All right, everyone, we've got to talk about the Colombian uh, election results with Yvonne Duque, I believe that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, first and foremost, though, the BitChute Award will be mounted like tomorrow or maybe even later today. It's just that the glue that's got to hold it on has to dry. Uh, so it's got, it's got like a 20-pound bag of azomite weighting it down uh, in order to sort of get it into the felt. Uh, but Colombia has rejected socialism, and I'll tell you essentially what I think happened. Uh, for the most part is that you've got a million Venezuelans from a, a real socialist, trademark Bernie Sanders, uh, regime that have moved in because they've been forced out of Venezuela. L largely young, very literate individuals who it's like their, their lines of work no longer exist. Disproportionately, the people fleeing Venezuela are professionals and people who would be fairly well off in a sane society. So what's happened, I think, is that it, all of these refugees, like real refugees from the Venezuelan breakdown of order, uh, have entered Colombia, over a million people, I believe, at last count. Uh, hundreds of thousands, I think, in the last year alone. And they're telling horror stories about all the weird shit that goes on in a collapsing, highly centralized socialistic regime. So in the final electoral results, you have essentially a sane man who wins, thankfully, with 54% of the vote versus someone who's, you know, Maduro light or something. Now, Colombia doesn't have a, a single uh, uh, horse-drawn card economy where it's just crude oil. So even if they adopted the same situation as Venezuela, it probably wouldn't lead to the complete collapse of society. But socialism does lead to recession. Centralization does lead to the, the sort of boom and bust looking situation they always blame actual capitalism for, despite the fact that capitalism is not responsible for such things. Now, socialism does not work. The Venezuelans have learned that the hard way. Eventually, Maduro probably gets pigeonholed by one of his own soldiers. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be, you know, anarchy, essentially. The state-run guerrillas will start purging people, even more will flee, and eventually other countries will probably have to get involved. You have, though, an enormous number of people who have fled because there's nothing for them to do in Venezuela, and then they're telling their host nations, hey, you know, yeah, trust us, don't vote for the socialists in your country, look what happened to us. Yeah, you know, my, my kid got his leg torn off by a, a grenade, by some socialist militiaman, and, you know, I was a doctor and doing okay, and then, you know, the bad times came, and then Maduro started killing people, and, you know, it's just gone crazy. When you get to the point where in your home nation, uh, you know, you're killing and eating your pets, uh, you can understand why it might be a problem. It's like, oh, there's some dandelions out on the lawn. Oh, <laughs> thankfully, I'll be able to have a meal. I can have some salad along with my half a cup of rice that I have to subsist on for the next three days. That's basically Venezuela's problem. Colombia has wisely decided to avoid uh, emulating them. The wor By the way, this is good uh, as far as working with maybe the, the, the Trumpites here. Because uh, Yvonne there is apparently populistic, uh, you know, in a moderate sense. Now, they'll probably call him like a literal Nazi or he's the next Hitler. Or he's going to be tossing people out of helicopters soon. Now, they do that, though, even for people who are center left, like by European standards. Like establishmentarians even get tarred with the Nazi label now. So I'm not sure that it really means that much to anyone at this point. But it's good. It's good to see that Colombia has exercised restraint and common sense. It's difficult because you uh, have socialists, they offer the population all sorts of wonderful sounding things, and it's sort of like saying, hey, kid, kid, get in my van, I've got a mountain of candy back there. That's basically how socialism operates. Even, even think about it in the U.S. sense, remember during the election, even Hillary Clinton shortly thereafter said, oh, Bernie Sanders fucked things up, he got popular because he offered people stuff he couldn't deliver. Hysterically, that's actually true. It's like a Clinton telling the truth. I thought I was going to burst into flames when I first read that. But no, Colombia will, will do better now. People have uh, essentially voted for the status quo, which is working. You've got uh, the FARC rebels there, which I know the one, the one thing Duque, uh, I believe, has mentioned is the possibility of sort of fiddling around with the arrangement that they have with their long-standing rebel groups, that they finally got to put down their armaments. Like, the government finally managed to negotiate with them and was basically like, hey, we're going to leave most of you alone. We're not, we're not going to, you know, put you on trial and behead you or anything, but we expect you, you've got to stop this stuff because we need to rebuild our society after decades of uh, warfare, essentially. Instead, <laughs> just uh, random massacres and sabotage, uh, socialist rebels, that is. 
Uh, they finally got that arranged, and it looks like the one thing he may do wrong is trying to fiddle with something that ain't broken. And it's like, uh, I think that his idea is that he wants to be able to prosecute some of these individuals. Um, that, that probably isn't the greatest idea. Everything else, yeah, keep on the status quo because it's working. You look at Latin America, and you look at, like, Argentina. They had their crisis, and that's sort of passed by. Brazil is in crisis. Venezuela is a failed state. Peru just had a major scandal. Chile elected socialists. I think they're on the downturn now, too. You've got a lot of problems right now in Latin America. You fucking look up at Nicaragua or Guatemala or even to Mexico right now. You've got problems everywhere in, in all of Latin America, practically. Except for Colombia. Colombia has become a symbol of South American stability, and it's actually hilarious. Panama. Uh, you know, two nations, I think mo a lot of Americans probably couldn't even find either of them on a map, which is sad. Because as someone who likes geography, I always find it sad when people are like, where's Ukraine? And they point to, you know, fucking Australia or something. Um, you know, oh, Thailand, oh, I guess it's Brazil's neighbor now. Where's Hawaii? Huh? Somewhere off the coast of Russia, I don't know. Uh, it becomes a problem. It's no wonder. We, we have uh, dumb politicians, too, because a lot of them don't know anything more about geography either. Can they even find Washington, D.C. on a map? A lot of people think that New York City and D.C. are the same thing. A lot of people think New York City is the capital of the United States, believe it or not. You think they can find Bogota? Uh, no, it's, it's good to hear that a Latin American state has rejected the poison of Latin America. Because socialism has crept into so many nations there, and it makes people impoverished and miserable. And then the socialists blame a bunch of, of non-existent capitalist saboteurs, and then offer them more socialism, essentially more, more breadcrumbs on the back of inflation, or whatever productive aspect of the economy is left. Colombia has chosen to avoid this. Good, Colombia will continue to be stable then for some time to come. That's about all. Peace out.